what's up guys so I thought it would be nice to kind of go ahead and do this video once to for the first time to actually look at America through the perspective of foreign policy and um, essentially just kind of get a perspective on what's been going on now there's a lot of confusion as to what is going on um, from Trump trying to supposedly elect a person that basically wants to ban gays from basically having sex to you know Steve uh, Steve Bannon who is just a blatant you know white supremacist in my opinion to clan rallies that have been breaking out in all sorts of places including even sadly in Anaheim California and basically just trying to discuss all sorts of situations around it. So, obviously, in case you've been living under a rock for the last couple of weeks, Donald J. Trump is pres going to be President of the United States. It's a bitter pill for everybody to swallow, including your noted Marxist, me. Um, but there's been a lot of different things. Number one, what we need to really consider is the fact that um, Trump is actually seems to be scaling back a lot of of America of his policies for America he seems to be kind of you know flip-flopping on a lot of things and yes that's a word we're using again um, you know circa 2012 <laughs> but we're bringing basically he's been flip-flopping on a lot of issues including his idea of LGBT rights. He literally went on television essentially and stated that the Supreme Court ruling in June of uh, uh, 2015 was set law. That there's nothing more we can do about it. So there's obviously some right-wing conservative uh, Christians that are none too thrilled, I guess, is a way we could put it with the whole situation. So, um, yeah, basically, basically Trump, uh, Trump has kind of gone back on some of those policies. As far as the immigration policy, he's talking about uh, deporting about one to three million um, undocumented uh, immigrants, to which he states that have had criminal records in the past. So, basically... If you basically even got slapped with a marijuana possession, you could possibly be sent back to Mexico if you're undocumented. If you're a citizen here, that, that part's still a little iffy. Personally, I don't even think he's going to even reach a million, much less a hundred thousand. Especially if you consider the fact that in California, well, we'll get to that in a minute. He's also on his idea of the building of the wall. Well, now it's gone from building of a wall to, to simply fixing what is already there, which is a fence. Um, so, really, he's not really doing anything differently than really than what George W. Bush or even Barack Obama did. So... Looking as now the outsider looking in, it's kind of one of those things where you start to get the feeling, is Tr you know, Trump's a fascist? <clears throat> yes. But the point is, is that he's, you know, becoming a bit, he seems to be com being a little bit more syncretic in the way that he does things. He's very sly. He doesn't really seem to have a real plan about it. Simply put, Donald Trump doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. The very fact that he's had to consult, in fact, almost to the point of hiring Obama to pretty much be his advisor and hold his hand and walk him through all this says a lot. The fact that he wasn't that he said he wasn't even prepared for the scope of the office he's about to take really shows the, shows the American public that he wasn't the that despite the fact that he saw this through, he 
he was never really serious about this. In fact, more than likely, he probably didn't even think he'd get this far. Neither did a lot of us. Now, as I was saying, from a Californian policy, we have to understand what is going to really be done and how it's actually going to be carried out. Could Donald Trump simply come out tomorrow and say, I still want to build the wall? Yes. But he also has realized, which is why I think he's working on this whole thing with the border fence now, is because he understands the fact that Californians, particularly Governor Jerry Brown, is not going to stand for it. In order to basically build a wall through the southern United States, you kind of need the approval, as well as the, the financial backing, of those states involved, or in this case, the taxpayers. And so, one of the things that Governor Brown has essentially stated is that he's willing to work with Mr. Trump, but he's not really willing to give up California's progressive values, progressive, you know, sort of standing in the community. So in other words, he basically told Donald Trump, it's like, yeah, I'll work with you, snicker, when he actually is meaning, no, you try to do anything that Californians simply don't, you know, authorize or believe in or whatever, we're basically just going to tell you to F off. And that's, you know, that's my way of putting it. But that is essentially what Mr. Brown means. That's what Governor Brown means. Brown simply stands for what I would loosely would have to call state sovereignty. Brown is stated in the past, it's not even Brown, it's just a traditional, Ameri uh, traditional Californian sort of thing. Even Governor Schwarzenegger was the same way. Um, so yeah, essentially, uh, Jerry Brown, he's taken a stance and said that California is not going to is not really going to follow a lot of what uh, Mr. Trump wants done. So obviously he could scale back gay rights. Not going to happen. Californians are already basically like, no. And we could obviously get into this whole thing. Well, Californians voted yes on, you know, uh, yes on Prop 8 back in 20, uh, 2008. Yeah, well, that was a different time. And so is now. I mean, we are basically 10 years more progressive, 10 years more educated, 10 years more everything, really. A lot has changed in, you know, 8, 10 years. So, the fact that Californians are very accepting that we, that the gay capital of the world, San Francisco, is here. We have a very gay community, a, a gay community in West Hollywood down in SoCal. California, whether people like it or not, is a is basically a progressive bastion, and to basically say that we're not going to do that, you know, that we're not going to do something that conservatives don't want, that we're going to take a stand, you know, draw our line in the, in the sand and take a stand, that should be taken very seriously. That's what Californians have always been about. That's what Californians always have stood for. You know, Jerry Brown also stated. About two years ago, that uh, California is a set, you know, acts as a separate nation because we basically are a separate nation. That's a pretty bold stance for a governor of a state to say. And you know, we could also bring up the whole thing since the election. There's been this surge in Cal Exit, the surge in Californian nationalism in a lot of cases. Um, you know, we've had a lot of those issues that have occurred. In fact, so much that we've had um, Elon Musk and Tim Draper, yes, the six Californias guy, but, you know, sometimes the enemy of my enemy is my friend, um, and even uh, Representative Lowe from Silicon Valley, all of whom have been endorsing Cal Exit. So the fact that California's secession basically is being, could be financed, as well as a bill introduced into the California state legislature that could essentially boost California's secession forward is quite a statement. All of this along with the fact that California independence movements like Yes California, California National Party, Californians for Independence, 
uh, the New California Republic, all these different organizations are essentially they're you know, they're blowing up, they're surging in numbers, and I think that's because a lot of people have just realized they've had it so much so that even Oregon and Washington have even considered joining in. Um, Nevada as well. Canada has even supposedly offered, uh, some Canadians have essentially offered uh, to make California, Oregon, and Washington part of their provinces, which I don't really support. Um, but the whole point is, is that this is all in, I'm not trying to go on a big Cal Exit California national stance, though I could. That's not relevant to this video. What I'm basically trying to state is that this is all fallout from essentially, you know, the Trump selection, you know, because I don't really like to call it an election. It was a selection by the oligarchs. And that's another thing before I go on further into this, we need to also understand another thing. Hillary Clinton was elected by the popular vote, but the popular vote in the United States doesn't matter. It's the Electoral College, which is basically an oligarchy that makes America an oligarchy. If you've ever actually looked into American politics and actually studied the way that the government runs, that's pretty much how it is. You don't, the people, don't, in, in a democracy, the people elect their representatives. That's what democracy essentially means, coming from the Greek word. It means that the people decide. And that is essentially what it's supposed to be. The people cast their votes, whoever gets the most votes, becomes the fucking leader. Under an oligarchy, a select group of people about 535 of them, basically are the ones that rule in power, a.k.a. Congress, U.S. Senate, House of Representatives. So when the people basically vote, especially since we basically elect, you know, people to these positions to make policy for us, they essentially are the ones that are become the electors. They're the ones that cast the vote for the president. So when you basically cast your vote, you're essentially casting it for that the elector of pretty much your district. So in this case, you know, Solano County, John Garamendi, um, for, um, you know, for other places it might be um, Loretta Sanchez or whoever, you know, it's, it's basically one of those things where it's you're kind of, you basically are electing whoever you're, you're casting your vote to your elector who makes the decision. And obviously, under California delegation, Democratic delegation rules, we've seen how that worked. Uh, Bernie Sanders getting completely screwed over in favor, you know, in favor of Hillary Clinton, who ended up losing to Trump anyway. Hint, did he hint, hint, DNC. Um, but it, you're casting your ele your vote essentially to your elector who then cast their vote. So in this case, Garamendi, Kamala Harris, um, you know, Gover Governor Brown, basically they're, uh, they're electing Hillary Clinton. Whereas in areas of more Republican or conservative pockets, such as, I don't know, your areas like, fuck, what, who is... Who does uh, Tom DeLay represent? Anyway, um, it's San Bernardino County or something like that. But let's just say your conservative pocket in San Bernardino County. They'll elect their Republican representative to cast a vote, in this case, for Trump. Or maybe even they did vote for Hillary. Who knows? You know, I don't know the ins and outs of who, all the representatives that voted who. I'm just making a generalized statement. So the point is, is that your electors basically make their selection for who they want to be president. And at the end of the day, the, that number of electoral votes ends up being 
making up who ends up winning the election. So in this case, Donald Trump had 279 congressional representatives that basically cast their vote for him. Whereas, what was it, 200 and some, 220, 240 some odd people cast their vote for Hillary Clinton. That's a prediction that probably could have been made long ago anyway. The fact that we have a U.S. Senate that was and still now is controlled by the Republican Party. That we have a U.S. House of Representatives that has been for the last few years controlled by the Republican Party. And for the next four years still will be. So the very fact that Donald Trump got elected through the Electoral College doesn't surprise me at all. Is it a bitter pill to swallow? Yes, but that's essentially how it works. And sadly, while I want it, we're, we're, if sadly how I wanted it to go, or if I had my means of it, I much would have rather tolerated Hillary for the next four years. Not saying I endorsed her, but I'm just saying that that would have been a slightly better choice. But prediction polls. Well, I love the fact that. A lot of polls were predicting that Hillary Clinton would actually win ahead of time. I could have probably predicted that Donald Trump would win, just based on the Electoral College alone. Now, if we did not have an Electoral College and this was the popular vote, this would have been this whole thing would be a completely different scenario. So essentially, this is how it's come down to. So backtracking, going back to one more thing I wanted to basically talk about in the fallout of Donald Trump becoming president is the fact that there's recently been a lot of attacks against minorities, particularly attacks against uh, women, particularly Islamic women, um, to gay people, to even black people. In fact, there was a story of a dude that who was um, from Atlanta, I believe, who was uh, strung up by a tr uh, strung up on a tree limb um, by a group of white supremacists, and yet people were trying to call it a suicide. Yeah, I don't really see a whole lot of black people going out and hanging themselves from trees for everyone to see. So there, right there, lies another issue, especially considering this took place around a Klan rally in Atlanta, or at least a, Do a Donald Trump victory parade or whatever it was, victory rally down there. So we've seen that. We've also seen, obviously, the in this rise, it seems like, in white nationalism, partic particularly um, we've even seen, sadly enough, down in Anaheim, uh, California, uh, violence that broke out. Now, granted, a lot of uh, neo-Nazis were also uh, injured, you know, seriously injured, but there was a lot of other people that were too, and of course this isn't news. I mean, just, what, a few months ago, shortly after actually my last um, rally that I'd went to at the Capitol in June, about a week later there was another rally, and it was a neo-Nazi rally and that one got violent as well, which obviously really kind of, you know, spooks some of us in the Cal Exit movement because, you know, you know, we, we worry that something might happen, one, you know, might happen during one of those rallies, or we might face a tremendous, you know, a opposition group such as that. The difference is, is that these, is that groups like mine have a very peaceful motion, a very peaceful movement. We don't advocate violence, and we take basically you've taken an oath of nonviolence. Whereas neo Nazis don't have that sort of structure or that organization. Neo Nazis, white supremacists, and white nationalists don't have that because that's not in their vocabulary. You know, it's one of those reasons why I've always stated that I will f continue to stand up and fight against white supremacy. Because, essentially, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, your so-called alt-right, 
and let's be honest, let's just call it what they are, they're fascists, they're basically, they're, they're just notorious for being violent. That when, when people basically get, are surprised or shocked that there was a rally, that a neo-Nazi rally or some uh, white supremacist rally that happens in some city or some town and it gets violent, people are, and especially the news media, are shocked. Why? They're notorious for being that. That's in their nature. You know, you basically get, you know, you give a, a you basically give a Neanderthal a club, what do you, and send him off into the wilderness to, you know, to find food, what do you think the Neanderthal's gonna do? And yes, I am um, comparing white supremacists and fascists to Neanderthals, just to go on record. So essentially, this isn't surprising. All this crap going on with, from, you know, lynchings essentially that are starting to happen again. In 2016, we've seen lynchings going on within the United States. We're seeing this whole new, new uh, surge in white nationalism and fascism. The only thing that we can honestly say that is a redeeming quality from Donald Trump through all that is the fact that he has even stated to his supporters, to, to these people, that they need to stop it because it's doing nothing for our country that we need to move forward, at, at, you know, in, in, as a unit, that we cannot, you know, remain divisive. And while it's going to sound hypocritical coming from a person that is part of a movement for California independence, I do at least on that part have to at least give it to Mr. Trump, because at least Mr. Trump has, you know, the sack to tell these people, hey, you're basically being idiots, quit doing this. Are they going to listen? No, but, you know, it's at least nice that he went on record to say it. That being said, let's move on to one more little thing, and that's obviously his appointments of who he's got going on for his cabinet. Obviously, he's got uh, Mike Pence, the notorious Christian theocratic fascist that uh, pretty much spurned this religious freedom restoration movement in a lot of red states, particularly Indiana. You know, the man that basically called for conversion therapy of gay people and, you know, the fact that he pretty much, along with everything else that went on during the Trump campaign, was basically endorsing the whole idea of a Muslim registry, which it reaches some connotations of what, you know, a man named Adolf did to Jewish people back in Germany in the 30s. So, there's that. You know, that's our vice president that we're going to have. And then there's a man named Steve Bannon, who basically is a right-wing, blowhard, racist, you know, asshole, who, when you basically listen to him talk, if Hitler was, or if Trump was Hitler and Pence was basically Himmler, then in this case, I would have to say that Steve Bannon would be Joseph Goebbels. And the reason why I say this is because this man has absolutely said some of the more, most horrendous things that any group, that, or any group, that any person affiliated with Trump's campaign, including Mr. Trump himself, has said. The fact that this man is being considered for, I believe it was, I think they're talking about Secretary of State or something, or something like that. They were talking about one of these positions. I know that one individual that they have that, he's, that is being considered for Secretary of Education wants to introduce creationism into schools. I can tell you, for one, that's one thing California is not going to support. Um, you'd have to basically, you'd have to literally 
drop propaganda leaflets from from you know from bombers pretty much from the sky to, you know and even then you know but I digress essentially there's that and then there's another guy that's being considered that is essentially wants that essentially as I said wants gay people to essentially be put in jail simply for for having sex for doing something that is completely something natural to us all so essentially throwing them in jail for something that they for being who they are again sounds a lot like something right out of 1930s germany where homophobia was illegalized we're basically being of a different religious group you know was you know tantamount to treason and basically even having a political viewpoint different from what the government basically had or at least that government had was essentially considered was considered almost like sedition so I mean these are all kind of connotations that we need to take into effect while at the same time listening to Mr. Trump and seeing kind of what he's gonna what's gonna happen with the United States as it moves forward so as I said when I started this video it's very hard to sift through all the bull crap from the last week and sit through you know all this sort of crap along with the fact that you have to look if you're gonna do that you have to sit through a Donald Trump interview where he and his family sit on gold thrones and basically try to say how they represent the working class uh, a little joke in there but the point is it's hard to sift through every little detail every little thing I could go on a you know comparison streak about Nazism and you know the people that are involved in Trump's campaign well at the same time we can look you know look at some of the more redeeming qualities at the same time it's hard to tell is Trump gonna build a wall or is he just gonna fix a fence is he gonna gonna try to re reverse you know the uh, the gay marriage ruling or is he gonna leave it as it is as he said is he gonna basically you know bomb Syria or is he gonna bomb California because I don't really think he knows the difference between the two you know are we gonna go to war with Russia or are we gonna become friends with him it, it's hard to tell it's one of those things we're looking forward you know as Amer as Americans all I can tell other folks is you know you've got to do your own research you got to look into it yourself as a Californian looking in it's really kind of hard to decipher everything going down when I myself have got so much other bullshit to take care of so from a foreign policy perspective America is basically I think no better off than where it was you know when Bush was in office or with Obama in office is the things probably gonna get a little more tightened probably but after listening to some of my more prominent youtubers that I tend to listen to in the political sphere especially so and talking to some of my fellow Marxists we've come to the conclusion that that really does not seem that much is going to change obviously capital might you know end up becoming a little bit more um, deregulated you know there might be you know certain issues when it comes down to the environment but I really don't really see anymore the overwhelming sense of horror that we're gonna have in the next four years coming from this country in fact at this point it's almost looking likely that my own nation is going to break free of the US within the next few years you know so hopefully we don't have to deal with this but uh, ultimately 
it, do, is it going to matter at the end? No. Trump is, whether it was Trump or Hillary, it's capitalism is going to go on. And this, it basically is just like, do you want corporate autocracy or, you know, very stringent, you know, corporatism? And in this case, it's more likely deregulation and more stringent corporatism. Like I said, it's really hard to sift through everything that Donald Trump is going to basically do. You know, the man flip-flops from day to day on, on his policies with, gay, with uh, gay rights, with immigration. The man doesn't even have a fucking clue how economics seems to work. Which doesn't surprise me given the fact that he had, what, four or five companies go bankrupt. The fifth one happening this year. Um, as far as, you know... A lot of things, though, the fact that he is looking to President Obama for more, for some advice on how to go about things, makes things a little bit easier for some people. And at, at least, if anything else, looking in, that's probably more of an, of an idea that Trump will probably become a lot more moderate as things go along. In fact, I would probably, if I had to compare him with anybody from the past, it would probably be... It's probably going to go back to us essentially how it was with the 80s with Reaganomics. You know, and though I'm not a big fan of trickle-down economics and I don't know a single person that does, I simply, simply put, I don't really see this being, you know, I don't really see Donald Trump being the monster that we pegged him for earlier on. He's still an asshole. He's still a friggin', you know idiot with, you know, ab with absolutely no clue on what he's doing. You know, he's weighing over his head, and even he seems, he's, he himself seems to be realizing that. But I think we're going to see a more moderate sense of him coming down, and that's why he, you know, some people, why some portion of the population even elected him. That's why even certain population that were even the Berniers went over to him. Don't understand it, but they did. Because the man went on this populist campaign of basically ranting and raving and saying absolutely nothing. And Americans eat that up. Americans don't give a flying fuck. Basically, they just see some asshole preaching a whole lot of nonsense and is like, hey, let's make him president. So it essentially comes down to the fact that, you know, this man just played the pretty much the role of a politician pretty well, you know, which is ironic considering he does, that, you know, his role as a politician is probably going to be very interesting, to say the least. So whether you're from America, whether you're from California, whether you're from freaking Timbuktu, have a good, have a, let's just try to get through these next four years and have a laugh if everything starts to go go completely to shit. I know Californians will. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner.